Hi, welcome back to another episode of The Vint Nerd. Today we're going to talk about Atari 8-bit computer power supplies. There's generally three power supplies for the computer line. There's the original 9-volt AC adapters, uh, that was for the original Atari 400 and 800, and then the 1200XL that came out. And then from there, Atari switched over to 5-volt DC power supplies. Uh, and those are actually nice nowadays because you can get away with using a USB to uh, a DIN connector for those power supplies. And then there's the third power supply. Well, it's still 5 volt DC, but it's known as the ingot. And that's the power supply you never, ever want to use again. So let's get into it. So uh, first let's take a look at the Atari uh, 9 volt power supply, one of the original ones. This was for the Atari 400 and 800 and then eventually the 1200XL. They also used these on the 1050 disk drives, I think the 850 interface if uh, offhand I remember that, and a few other uh, peripherals. Uh, it's uh, AC, so it's not a DC power supply, it uh, outputs 9 volt AC. So you can't use these, uh, even if you had an adapter on the uh, barrel connector here, you cannot use these on any of the uh, other Atari 8-bit computers. Just the 400, 800, and 1200 XL. Uh, so I just wanted to show that quick. Talking about uh, the DC power supplies, you can't just say these are for the XL line and XE because these won't work on the Atari 1200 XL. Uh, these are for the 600XL, 800XL, 65XE, 130XE, 800XE, and the XE game system, or XEGS. And these have a 7-pin uh, DIN, round DIN uh, connector. And if you take a look in here, it shows that the 5-volt uh, is on the 4, 1, and 6 pin and ground is five, three, and seven. And that's gonna be the same in all of these other DC power supplies for the Atari 8-bit line. All the five volt DC output. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that there's three five volt power supplies or outputs on this power supply or any of these. They just tied all three of those uh, pins together. Uh, perhaps for um, know, continuity, you know, maybe uh, letting the amperage get over more of them or if a cold solder joint on one of them uh, happen or something. Uh, but it's, it's just a single output of 5 volt uh, DC. And these particular ones, uh, they all look different, but they're all one amp. And the funny thing is, uh, first off, this one here uh, is not North American. Um, so let's put that one aside. These two look, well, I'm completely different. But if you take a look, they actually have the same part number, 70042, and over here, 70042. And uh, this does have a dash 011. This one has dash 01. This is made in Taiwan. This one is made in Singapore. So their Atari power supplies, one amp, same part number, they look completely different and they're made in different countries. So um, that might be a reoccurring theme here. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, this has a part number of 7045. So maybe the 700 series or 70,000 series uh, were the one amp models. Because let's get into taking a look at the one and a half amp power supplies. Again, all these are 5 volt DC. And these here, these here again, all look completely different. They are one and a half amp output. And that's good if you're using uh, more peripherals on your Atari uh, memory upgrades, anything plugged into the bus, maybe a product that plugs in the uh, cartridge slot that might draw more power, uh, power out the joysticks, power out the SIO port. All that comes from your power supply. So whereas a one amp power supply uh, could give you enough for, you know, 
a computer and a disk drive and something else, uh, these will give you a bit more room to add more peripherals. And talking about these being the same part number, uh, well, guess what these are? All the same part number. So it's uh, CO61982, 61982, 61982, 61982. So even though these all look the same, really one of these doesn't belong here. Um, the reason being is this one just fails the most uh, and in a bad way. Uh, let's take a look at these here though. If you notice, uh, there is venting on these. I'm not sure, yeah, you can see that there. And this is very similar to this one, obviously. A uh, little bit different, but similar style. And this one has some venting on it as well. At least it looks like it wants to have venting in there. Um, on the back side, maybe. This one has no venting. And actually, out of at least the power supplies I have, this is the heaviest. It's um, just full of epoxy, and it's three pounds. Now, that doesn't make it bad that it's full of epoxy, although I believe uh, the general consensus is th that didn't turn out to be the greatest move ever. Uh, but between that and the weight, uh, this one here is generally the more sought after power supply because it, it just looks, it just looks so nice. And you can get newer power supplies, uh, but if you want to go with authentic, uh, this one here is the, the more liked one. It's just got a nice style to it. But keep in mind, all these power supplies are 30 to 40 years old. So you always want to check them before you use them. If you pulled it out of the, the basement, the closet, if you got one off uh, uh, online, somebody uh, gave you one, you always want to check the power supplies before you hook them to the computer. And as much as I say that, I know not everybody does, and I'm sure I've hooked them up before like that, but really the safer bet is to check them because they are 30 to 40 years old. Uh, you could go with a newer power supply. You could buy this uh, online, uh, newer design, uh, of course, newer materials, it's only, you know, a year or two older. I mean, this could be a month old, who knows? Um, this one happens to be mean well. And the nice thing about this is, again, it's 5 volt DC. It's a nice new uh, product. It's not 30 or 40 years old and it has 3 amp output on it. So that's going to, unless you're doing something crazy, it's going to cover everything you're going to do with your Atari. Then you could also go on to using a USB cable. Now, the nice thing about USB, uh, years ago when USB came out, it was a way to connect, as everybody knows now, lots of different devices to a computer. Mice, uh, keyboards, uh, sound input, output, and so forth. But one of the other side benefits is it became a nice ecosystem for powering things. So you're charging your phone, uh, and surprisingly, you can run your Atari computer off this. Again, the, the Atari just needs five volts and one, one and a half or whatever amps, depending on what you're doing with your computer. And these are five volts. Now, this is an old one I've got kicking around, uh, Apple iPad adapter. And I like this because it's 2.4 amp output. And it's uh, well-designed, well-built. You can also get uh, an Anchor. Uh, I've bought a lot of Anchor products. They're pretty good designs. And this actually has two outputs, each doing 2.4 amps. So I could drive a couple Atari computers off this or charge my phone and an Atari computer or, I don't know, whatever you want to do with it. So again, you can buy these cables. You can actually make these. Uh, I'm probably going to do a video down the line here just showing uh, you know, the parts needed and just how to wire it up. It's really pretty easy. And uh, what I want to do is let's take a look at the inside of this one. Another reason that this is sought after is that you can open it up. Just take out uh, four screws. Now there originally were feet, little feet stuck in here. You can see on this one, these are uh, not round, the rectangle. Uh, these generally come off and 
on this. They were round feet, but again, they're 30 to 40 years old and they disintegrated in taking them out. Zip, 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 zip. So you can see in here, you've got, uh, of course, the transformer, there's a user serviceable uh, fuse. Uh, not, it's never died as far as I'm aware. Uh, the capacitor in here is actually in pretty good shape. I see no bulging, no leaking, and it's got a nice big heat sink on it. And you can see the venting down below here again. I can see blue through the slots here. So this is a very nice power supply that you can service if, if later on the, the fuse, the capacitor, whatnot, uh, you can get this repaired and put it back together and it still looks the same. Yep, yep. Let's take a look inside the ingots. Again, the power supply you do not want to use. Any of these 30 to 40 years old, they could fail and, and you can't blame them. Uh, this, however, fails far worse than the other ones. The other ones generally will just stop working. This one, for whatever reason, when it decides it wants to fail, it tends to do an over voltage. So instead of going from five volt to zero, it'll go to 20 or a hundred or 120. Whatever it does inside, it's just too much power and it will in an instant fail and fry your computer. Uh, generally, again, these other ones here, uh, they won't. They'll just stop working and then you'll wonder why your computer isn't working. This will stop working and fry your computer. And then you'll plug another power supply in and your computer uh, obviously is not going to work. Uh, so let's take a look inside here. What I'm going to do is, after I get this open, I'm just going to recycle it. I don't ever want to plug my computer into one of these, or one of these into my computer. And this is going to be fun, huh? Oh, uh, there we go. <clears throat> so, I've already recycled three of these. Um, I haven't bothered to take one apart yet. So I'm curious. And there's others, at least two or three. I've bought some computers from other people that had these power supplies. And I just tell them to keep it. Uh, and better yet, recycle it. You know, if it's something I bought off uh, a sale online, I'll tell the uh, person to just keep it, save the money on the shipping, and just send it to the electric recycling. There we go. So a few minutes ago, you saw what the nice one looks like. And hopefully, come on. Yeah, they definitely didn't want you opening this one. Hopefully I don't, don't do a Julia Child's move here. It's kind of fun. Ah, that's probably enough. Ooh, mm, smell the history. So you can see here, oh yeah, let's get the side open here. It is just an epoxy brick. There is nothing ever going to get repaired on this. Um, and it's kind of thought that maybe it was going to help with the heat, but ultimately it didn't. And that might be a reason why it fails. Uh, if some, you know, if you got some comments on that, your experiences with one of these failing. Uh, actually comment if you have one and what you plan on doing with it because again you should just get rid of it and recycle it uh, I would never use one so that's what that looks like inside compared to to that well, that's no fun uh, the next thing I'd like to just cover quick is just showing testing one of these and let's see that one's open let's forget that that one is open and let's forget about that one let's take a look at this okay so it's plugged in 
so this should be live right now. And you can hold it if you've got a multimeter. You could go ahead and hold this or it's easier if you got a third hand here. You can check it. The shield around here often will be tied to ground or not. What you don't want to do is to stick this in and short on the shield on one side and stick the other probe in and short it there because uh, of course that can damage your power supply. So what we can do is we can touch that on this side and again any of these pins here, uh, here, here and here is going to be ground and on the other three they're all going to be 5 volts. So you only have to touch one of each of the pins. You don't have to do them all. So if we take a look, so this is doing 5.2 volts. So it's definitely working and it's not flaking around. It's keeping a steady 5.2 volts. Uh, but the thing is, battery testers and multimeter, uh, multimeters, multimeters, they don't put any load on the power supply. When you're checking batteries and checking power supplies, uh, again, battery checkers and multimeters will just tell you what the voltage is that it sees, but it's not, not putting any load on the power supply and hence not stressing the power supply out, you know, making it work, making it do its job. So you can get a power supply checker like this. This one is made for the Atari. There's another video you can take a look uh, on my channel. And when you plug it in, it's much easier to, to hook up. You can see it's telling me it's a five volt power supply it's checking, of course. And the voltage is 5.14. Now the multimeter said 5.2, but what happens is this one is putting it under a 400 milliamp uh, load, uh, 0.4 amp load onto this power supply. So that makes the power supply work a little harder. And so the voltage is gonna drop a bit uh, in order for it to, to do its job. So this kind of tester is nice because it's telling me it's 5.5. You can see it went up. It's got a, a ripple output here showing you that. And the nice thing about this is uh, you can see the heat uh, sink fins on here. It's putting a load on the power supply and changing it over to heat. Uh, it doesn't have much electronics in it, of course. And you can leave this plugged in for as long as you want, 10 minutes, an hour, all day, and just stress the power supply. You know, not stressing it to the point of trying to get it to fail, but just having a load on it so that it's doing its job. And you can come back and see uh, if it's still giving you the five point whatever in this case 5.15 volt and again there's another video i've got uh explaining this a little bit more if you have this uh affectionately known as the ingot five five three three pounds of uh, dead weight again it is atari part number co61982 it doesn't have any venting or appearance of venting. Again, this is the same part number, but you can see at least, you know, appearance of venting. This definitely has venting on it. And this appears to have venting as well. So any of the one that has venting marks, they're all fine. They're the same part number, same amperage output, all from Atari, but these are all fine, barring the general they are 30 plus years old. So you, you want to check them. This one, get rid of it. Recycle it, of course, but if you have one, just get rid of it right now. Don't ever use it again. That is the general consensus in the Atari community. And uh, nobody wants to fry another old 40 year old computer uh, and lose it. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope that helped. Uh, in the comments, I'd like to hear if you have one and you're getting rid of it or Maybe you know about this already and how many have you gotten rid of? I've gotten rid of at least, well, this would be the fourth, I believe, and at least two I didn't take uh, from other uh, people when I got the computers from them. So till next time, uh, thanks a lot for watching.